Hello, skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show, Season 7, Episode 8. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. <laughs> this episode guests are Tegan Ellis, Blockhead Dave, and Zinzag. You guys ready to get this show started? Yeah! Let's do this. What's up, Tegan? How you doing? Good, how about you? Good, good. How was the drive up? It was fast and hectic, for sure. And we what, got here, though. Where'd you come from? Corona. Okay, how far is it? That's like, what, 45 an hour drive? Yeah, just about, depending on which roads you take, the toll roads or not. Okay. Yeah. And so, let's get a little into it. So, what got you into skateboarding? My uncle, when I was super young, I want to say, like, when I was six on my, no, on my, yeah, when I was six on my seventh birthday, I broke my face on a bike. Like knocked Hold myself on, you, you broke your face on a bike? Like I was riding a bike and I went up this wall and I just face planted, like knocked oh, myself out, shit. broke my face, everything. Like the whole teeth and everything yeah, was out? Yeah, everything Damn. was all bad. And then it was on my birthday at my birthday party. And so when I came back from the hospital, he had gotten me a skateboard. And he was like, let's stay away from the bikes for a little <laughs> bit. Let's get you on this. And then he got me into it. And he's been skateboarding his whole life. And since there, I've just kept going. And like obviously like, there was some times where I was uninterested and being like, oh no, nah, like, I want to go back to the bikes. And then probably within the last three or four years, I've just been like on my skateboard only and just trying to take off with it. Okay. It's like my favorite thing to do. Do you remember the first board that your uncle gave you? I remember what it looked like. I don't remember what board it was. It was, it had like a yellow background and it was green. Like the image was green and it was like a, a foot, but the big toe was a face and it was like a zombie kind of hobo type of thing. I don't know how to explain it. That's all I can explain is it was a hobo, the background was green, or the background was yellow, and the dude was green, the okay. foot was green. It was all like gory kind of. It was super sick, but oh, I yeah. don't know what type of board it was. And, and that's where you grew up skateboarding in the Corona, right? No, so I'm originally from South Lake Tahoe. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. What's it like up there? Cold, touristy, oh, really? always. It's always busy, but you know, when you got good friends, you can make anything happen. Definitely, definitely. And so did you have a lot of skate shops up there? What, skate community up there? What? Um, we have this one place called the, the Skate House, which is like, a, it's an indoor bowl. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, it used to be a regular park and they had like every feature you could skate that you really dreamed of. And then mm -hmm. somebody bought it out and they turned it into a pool and with like the diamond coping and everything and it's got a mini ramp up top and a chill section and skate shop downstairs. The owner's super chill. Some of the dudes there are pretty chill, but and then the other skate shop that everybody goes to is called the Village Board Shop. Mm -hmm. And they have like anywhere from like swim swim stuff, summer gear, winter stuff, snowboards, but that's where I'd get all my decks from. Okay. And do they do a lot of stuff for the community that you remember? Um, not really. The skate house kind of does. They throw a little events here and there, but the village board shop mainly does stuff for their snowboard team because okay. that's kind of based in Tahoe is the winter, the winter scene. Everybody's all snowboarding for Sierra or Heavenly, mm -hmm. so it goes pretty good there. All right. And then what, what, how old did you move down to Corona? Um, I've been in Corona for about almost two years. I okay. moved down here pretty recently um, just to finish high school, and then I moved in with my aunt. And they were like, oh, after high school, are you going to go back or stay? And I was like, I'll just stay. I'll see how it is. So now I live on my own with my dog and my girlfriend. And oh, sick. What kind, of, what kind of dog? I got a Belgian Malinois. What? Yeah. That's sick. What's the name? His name's Rhett. Okay. It's super sick. Does he's, he go skateboarding with you all the time or what? Yeah, he pulls me. It's crazy. Hell yeah. He's, he probably runs at least 20 miles an hour. 20? Damn. He pulls fast. He's yeah, that's a good pretty dog. sick. He's healthy. Getting in that work all the time, exercise. <laughs> Gets you to exercise, right? Yeah, too. That too. 
That's where you're at. And so moving down here and going f- come from up there oh, is a big culture shock. Like, how'd you adjust to yourself to it? Um, honestly, I'm just like an open person. I like to talk to people. So like coming down from there, I always had like my friend group and everybody, and I would always talk and meet new people. Coming to school here, I made friends on like the second day of school, and then that friend group just has always been my little group in Corona. Okay. I still hang out and talk to all those guys even after high school. We all meet up and go eat and stuff. Okay. Super sick. And do you remember your first skate video you ever watched? My first skate video? Or YouTube, video? I don't know. Which. YouTube? <laughs> the first skate, like, film, to be honest, would be, like, the Lords of Dogtown movie. Okay. But, like, video-wise, I've seen too many. I just can't think what, of the what, first one. Which one has, it mostly stuck out to you? The Frankie Villani video, his so, real street part. Yeah, that, that one's sick. Video. That one's super sick. I love that one. And, and so that's what got you more into watching his video what inspired you more to, to get into skateboarding yeah stuff. that's what like took off with the creativity like I would just kind of skate parks and try to be like stick to what everybody else would skate and once I saw that and how creative and different style he had I was like I want to skate like that guy and so I just now when I skate I try to think of like how different and create creative I can get on certain features and certain places and stuff newer spots see what I can do there that's not the average skater Okay. Does, yeah. does your uncle still skate or what? Yeah, he still skates all the time. He skates in Gardnerville at Lampy Park. Okay. And that park's really good. It's really big. It's got, the way it's designed is kind of like, think of like a super long half pipe. And, but in the middle at the bottom of the half pipe is all your features. So you mm-hmm. can say anything, switch, regular, whatever stance you are, you can skate anything both ways. Okay. It's super good. And do you you ever go back and play game of skate with your uncle or anything? Yeah, all the time. So who, Every time. who wins, you or him? Him. He's too good. He's really good. He's really good. So that means you got to step every game for the next time, right? Yeah. Hell he's yeah. He's got like a bunch of weird little tricks that are like um, just some, something out of the ordinary too, like you wouldn't think of and some I can't even pick a name for or anything. He just does these weird little like um, pivot stuff and all that. Okay. Like on, on a snowboard, in the snowboard reality, you call it jibbing. Okay. It's like you got all your butters and stuff. It's super sick. So so being a biker and then getting into skateboarding, do you feel like it has helped you out a lot better yeah. in life or with skateboarding and everything? Yeah, 100% because my dad's always into bikes and dirt biking. So I grew up dirt biking and BMX racing and all that. I have tons of trophies. But... Like once I transitioned to skateboarding, he was like, that's better for you. Like you're doing better off doing that than you are on these. Like the way the world is for the extreme sports on that side, you have to like be set up for that. You know, Yeah. you kind of have to have all the stuff there for you. Like when you're, if you're racing dirt bikes, you can't just break apart at a race and then try to make it to the next one. You have to have sponsors that are going to help you because that's just going to drain your bank account. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it drained your bank account? Yeah, 100%. It drained my dad, for sure. My dad was down. Your dad was like, no more credit cards for you, buddy. Yeah, 100%. And then once, skate, once I just kept skateboarding and my uncle saw it, my uncle would kind of throw me boards here and there. And then these, um, this kind of like local brand, Martian Skateboards, he, okay. he kind of came out and all the groups kind of saw him, like all the other skaters, and they were trying to get on that. And then... He was like, I see you all the time. Like, here's decks here and there and wheels and stuff. But he's super sick. He makes really That's good That's your products. first sponsor? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. How did, how did that make you feel on your first sponsor? Really good. It really pushed me, I think, because that's when I was, like, really trying to skate a lot harder and skate more, like, every day than just kind of out, out of the park with the friends and chilling. Mm-hmm. And then once that happened, he was like, and everything just clicked. I just kept skating and trying to progress and get more and more and more out of it. And then... He still kind of does the like all of his stuff on the side, but he's not as big. So he just kind of if you hit him up for clothing, he'll send you some, or you want a deck or product. He still makes all that stuff on the side for his free time. That's right. He, he does whatever he does for his work. Oh, that's right. And you gave us a video. Tell us about this video we're about to watch. So this video, I really could have put my all effort into it, but just everything was preventing me from trying to make this video. It sucked. Like the first time we went out and filmed, I got arrested at Norco at the college. How'd you get arrested? What happened? That was all bad. It was just, <laughs> it was so dumb. Like, so I was skating like the six there, just warming up, getting ready for the big outlets they have. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to kick flip it. And then like, I had already done like most of my warm up tricks, like pop, shove, tail, grab, back 180, every, every variation of anything. And 
I was cake flipping it, and then the security guard came out, and like he had just come out right as I'm going up to it, and I kick flipped it, and I stuck it, and I'm going back, and I'm like, oh, there's a security guard. We have it all on video too. And in the video, I'm like, I'm gonna go ask him for one more try. And I walk up the stairs, and he's like, you're being detained. And I was like, for what? And he was like, he was like, you just did that right in front of me. And I was like, oh, I didn't see you. Like, can I get one more try and we'll leave? And he's like, no. And he starts trying to grab me with his handcuffs and everything. And I was like, oh, no. And I like try to dodge it. And then he was like, nah, I'll get back here. And he, arre he only arrested me out of like the two other kids I was with. So I was like, what? Oh. I was kind of like in shock. I was yeah. like, no, this is crazy. So he arrested me. Dude was, he, he had a power trip. He oh, yeah. was on something. Cause the other cop came out and he was like, you shouldn't even be arrested. Like, this is stupid. Like, this is a waste <laughs> of our time. And so we, um, we, we like left, or no, he took me in the cop car to the station and we were sitting in like the, like where they take you to book you at first, yeah. that was stupid. The whole time, all the people there were like, why are you booking this kid? Like, it, for skateboarding, really? Like, we can't even hold him here. <laughs> and so the minute, like, they booked me and they put me in the, they put me straight into releasing. Like, they didn't put me in a holding cell. They so they're just me. like, you're going out. Yeah, they were like, you're going to sit here until your shit gets signed and then you're out. And then I sat there for like four hours because it took forever. Mm. There was like a bunch of people in there. They're like, what did you do? And I was like, skateboarding <laughs> and they were like that's dumb you shouldn't even be here so the minute i left they're like yeah you should honestly try to fight the case but it's kind of pointless because i found out if you fight the case you get the maximum penalty if mm. you if you don't get it and that's like a couple days in jail which isn't bad but i don't feel like yeah, you don't going through it. all that yeah. i don't got money for lawyers you're just skateboarding wanna, that's all yeah so i guarantee the judge is just gonna be like community service or man screw this yeah, yeah, drop yeah. everything so he tried, what he wrote on the ticket is that I assaulted him, I resisted arrest and trespassing. Trespassing obviously, maybe yeah. isn't resisting arrest, but assault is crazy. Yeah. I didn't touch him, I just was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And then we left and then, yeah, that sucked. That sucked real bad. <laughs> that was the first time, that was the first time we went out to go film. And then second time, it was kind of chill. We were at the spot that all of us were talking about. It's, um, I think they called it the Devil's Playground and it was just, it was super dark and I was with a couple of the homies and it's kind of lit up, but they have like this giant triangle bank. It's mm. super sick, it's super fun, it's steep. But we were kind of awling over like the, the water and there's like a little wall ride thing and I was doing that. Sick. And then we had to leave. So we left and I went back to Corona and dropped all the homies off. And then just recently, we I went to go hit at Centennial in Corona. They have a 10 stair handrail and I was trying to hit that and it's the way the rail is it's too steep for the way it kind of just throws you straight at the ground versus like any other street handrail where mm -hmm. it's kind of it's steep but it's also tall which is like any other handrail but the way it, it's made it just straight throws you at the ground yeah it's like you, you're just kind of getting on just you're already there yeah and so i was getting bored of it and i was trying to backside flip it and then landed primo and just was, <laughs> yeah straight i was like all right we're done today we're we're done and then last night we went to um, UCR for the Gary Anderson Gap. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of skating around there looking at everything. The Gary Anderson Gap's pretty big. It's not like a typical stair set. It's, yeah. it's like a, a drop on top of the stair set, so it adds the height, but it kind of extends out. And that, that gap's fun. Once you land, like your first couple of them, you're like, all right, this is fun, I can feel this. And then we we're kind of skating the upper drops and ledges, and I was mm -hmm. going for like a back 180 off of it and then I was going to half cab into the the second drop and then pop shove tail grab off the third one and when I went to half cab there the way the the last drop is it's made out of like this um like you would see on like a typical textured ceiling where it's mm -hmm. got like the the like it pokes you on top I landed on something like that and it just stopped the board I just went straight onto my back Damn. and I just flew and just slammed real hard I was like yep I'm done today, and so <laughs> I just shortened the clip. I just went for back 180, and then I dropped off one of the, la the last one, and then meloned off that one, and then just ollie the bigger gap, the bigger Anderson gap, which is pretty big. Okay. I yeah. went there pretty long ago. I would say like six or seven months ago to the ollie at, and it's pretty hefty. I couldn't even land it then, but now that I landed, I was like, that's crazy. Because now you can go back and kickflip it, right? Yeah, 100%. That's All the right. next step. You hear that? Next step is going to kickflip that. Yeah. You ready to show everybody? Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. Tegan Ellis' video. Let's check it out.
Dude, that was a dope video. Thank you, man. That was sick, dude. I, I saw that little gap trick. That was, that was pretty dope. Yeah. It was that, super fun. Yeah, definitely. And so you, we got a couple questions for you. So what do you see yourself going on? Do you see yourself more going into skateboarding more? Or what do you see yourself going into um, for the future? For the future, I really like, I want to see myself being the first skateboarding Olympian to win out of Tahoe, out of South Lake Tahoe. So that'd okay. be cool to me. That's like my dream right there. But it would just to go pro and have my own pro model and my own shoe. And like that would be like the dream to me. That's the dream I want. Just to have like something I can show my mom be like, this is my shoe. This has my name on it. This like, this is crazy. Like now you could be like, oh, I'm wearing Tegan Ellis this year. Like, <laughs> that's crazy to me. That's all, that's all crazy. Or like my friends would be like, oh, I just picked up Tegan Ellis' new deck. Like, just the pro model to have it there and have my name on it and the graphic I want, that's what I want. I want that, just be like, this is mine, like I earned this. Do you feel like you gotta work hard for it or what? Yeah, 100%, you gotta. Well, what's working, what's working hard for you to turn pro? I'm, to, for me, I'm just skating every day after work. I work from 7 a.m. to 4 and then I, I head straight home, I let my dog out, I run him, I'll take him with me sometimes and then I'm skating till like 10 or 11 p.m. at night. And then the weekends, I get Saturdays off. So the weekends I'm out here in Irvine or Costa Mesa or Santa Ana skating with the, the county project all the time. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. The homie Kev owns that and we skate with Ray and a bunch of other people. And this dude Jesse skates for SAD so we get to skate for him all the time. Okay. That's pretty sick. And like, um, I think Sunday we're supposed to go, yeah, tomorrow we're supposed to go out to LA and film. So okay. That'd be real cool. So you feel like you have to skate every day and, and, and just keep bust your ass and, and get yeah. out there and skating and stuff. You just, it's chasing your dreams. That's right there at its finest. And just you, and you feel like turning pro will, will get you where you need to be. Yes, 100%. Even if it's like I'm not the biggest skater out there, but I'm pro, it's like to me, it's like I know what I worked for. You know? Okay. Hell it's yeah. right there. And then the last question, what can you say to upcoming skaters or skaters that look up to you and that want to be what, what you're trying to do, live the dream you live, what can you tell them? Just literally don't stop skating. Just keep going, just keep pushing. Even if you like, you feel like you're not going anywhere, you're stuck on the same tricks, just keep progressing, it'll all come to you. Once you learn certain tricks, more tricks will come to you later on. Like you'll figure out how to like, like when you pop shove, if you just reach that hand down, that's pop shove tail grab right there on its own. You just have to grab it and place it under you. It's super light, super fun. It's easy, you'll get it quick. But don't be typical. Be creative, think different, think outside the box. Because somebody's gonna see that and be like, well, this kid can do the same thing. Do something different where they look at that and be like, that's dope, that's different than that kid or that guy or this girl or that company or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just be different. So be yourself pretty much. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely dope. Thank 100%. you. So, thanks for coming on Tegan. Thank you for having and, me. And you ready to check out Zinzag? Yeah, one hundred percent. All right, coming up next is Zinzag. It would probably be Give Me My Money Chico. I don't know, that was one of my favorite parts. Just the traveling that we were doing, going to like Asia a lot, you know, China and just getting all these different spots like we were doing a lot of traveling and yeah. i guess my other one that it's also one of my my favorites favorite favorite is the 411 chico issue that claraball did it's one of yeah. the last issues and you know i remember claraball was, was telling me like yeah let's do this we're gonna go to china we're gonna nicaragua we'll go to puerto rico we'll go to and i was like yeah 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 whatever <laughs> all that happened and i was feeling good on my skateboard first of all and he got like the best out of me i feel like really proud of that part because it was it wasn't with the company or nothing like that it was just kind of like a, a project also he was like you know you you decide who you want in this video you know like i was able to pick like the people you know to share a part with me all that stuff was fun man hey guys thanks for coming on thanks for having yeah. us hell yeah thanks for coming on man and and how was the drive up it was good it was good and y'all drove from ob we're down from San Diego, yeah. Okay, okay. You didn't hit too much bad traffic or anything? Nothing okay. too crazy. Little, okay. Little well, well, let's tell some of the guests, you know, each one of you guys, who you are and what, what instrument you guys play. All right, my name is Aaliyah, and I play uh, the keyboard, and I sing. Uh, my name is Pat, and I play bass. I'm Aaron Anthony, and I play guitar. I'm Saxica. I play uh, sax and keys. Okay. 
And, and I like the fact you're down there. That's good. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. Yeah, low key. <laughs> and um, so, how did you guys meet up? I mean, did y'all go to high school together? Did y'all like live in the same town? I mean, how did you guys meet up to to play together? Yeah. So. Uh, Pat and I are married, and so we started playing together, um, and then Saxy and I kind of grew up on the same street and reconnected over social media, okay. and so he started playing with us, and then Aaron uh, came to our second show ever and was like, I have to be in this band, so... Okay. Yeah. He, sh- he shot his shot, and he, he was, was like, in the band. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. 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 Like, we tried him out. Yeah. We tried him out. <laughs> the rest was history. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm gonna ask you two guys. So you guys met while playing, right? Performing, or or how'd y'all meet? No, we um we met through a mutual you know, childhood friend. Yeah. And uh, we didn't play music together for a long time, um, and just started about three years ago now. So. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So we've been together about ten years, and just about three years ago, we just just started playing music together. Yeah. I've been playing music like on my own for in like different bands for about 10 years now, but together now we have been uh, playing for about three years. So it's been, Ooh, that's been pretty awesome. cool, yeah. That's awesome, man. And, and, and so you got you knew them and so you jumped in with them, with this band? Or what? Yeah, well I was just posting on social media because I was just looking for a band to play with. Uh, at all, I grew up playing in church, but I wanted to be part of like a band, part of just making original music and um, yeah, I was just posting videos and she's like, oh, you play, you want to come jam with us? And I enjoyed what we did and I just came back again and before you know it, we're getting prepped for a show and then another show and then another yeah. show and it, it kicked off into what it is today. So it was, it was funny how that all happened from not speaking to each other and then being in a band together. So. And yeah. you said playing in church, so, what was it, so what's, it, what's it like playing church music compared to this? Big difference? Or what? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, it took me a while. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable playing anything outside of it yet, just yet, because it took, um, you know, it was just a different style. I didn't know if it would be, if it would sound good with different genres or what I would play. And all this is original music. So I was just curious and a little scared of what would come of it. But um, I'm happy with what we're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and same with you, too. Wait, uh, I think in what way, actually? I mean, so, so, you, so you just came on board and saw him play one, at a show, and you are like, yo, I'm going to jump in this? Yeah, basically, um, we had, like, some useful contacts, too, but, like, we were able to kind of just, like, kind of meet up in a weird way. Sorry, like, I'm also from, uh, from New York, so, like, I'm kind of not from any scene, really, so it was kind of really nice to just... Yo. Speak in mind, brother. Ranch yes. cock. Speak in mind. <laughs> he got caught by chance. Yeah. Um, it was kind of just in the wind. We were, we were kind of figuring out our final form, and uh, at the moment we were looking for a guitar player, and yeah, so pretty much he showed up at the show. and um, We just kind of got the talking and just kind of made a relationship from there, actually, I guess, yeah. That's awesome. cool. Yeah. And it's awesome how y'all formed all together. I mean, I, I actually seen you guys perform down in San Diego at Breakpoint, and you guys get ass. I mean, you guys are really good. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the talent, the style, and everything is, is pretty cool. And that's why I was like, dude, I need to have these guys on the show, man, because I want, I want the world to see you guys, you know? For sure. Appreciate yeah. that. And so, like, do you guys remember, each one of you guys, do you remember when you first time played? performed at a show not with each other but mm-hmm. se- like separate do you guys actually remember the first yeah. time you played like what yeah. was your experience like well I, my first time playing was when i was 10 i, I was thrown into the sax by my mom uh, i was bullied into it and she, oh, he, oh, boy, so she like well <laughs> she she decided for me like you're gonna play the sax i'm like all right i guess so yeah she got this whole like performance done for church a special event and I was 10 and she's like all right just practice for a few weeks and we're gonna play the song just play this so that was my first performance in front of people and then I started playing for the actual church on a weekly basis and then it took a while before performing you know with an actual band you know shows and stuff like that but that was my first performance and were you nervous were you like scared like, did you, did you, like throw- I mean I was a kid no I mean I remember being yeah nervous I had never done it before but um I mean we were we were made to practice like every day for weeks, so it was like you know. Becomes like second nature. I don't remember the yeah the nerves as much as just um, doing it, but yeah, yeah. 
It was exciting. I know that for sure. He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> um, my first performance was like a little over 10 years ago. It's pretty cool. Like I grew up going to a, a like a hard rock metal venue called Soma, and uh, That's it's done in, Eagle, right? yeah, yeah it's like Soma. off of Sports Arena. Yeah, yeah. I remember Soma. Yeah, and so I grew up going to those shows starting at like 12 years old. So I went in mosh pit, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seeing like some like nice like deathcore bands, and like I saw Slayer in like 2007. You were going like, yeah. Yeah, so I grew up going to this venue, and then uh, in high school in 2012, I uh, joined a rock band, and my first show was actually at this venue, so it was like, Kind of like this like dream come true type feeling, like playing a show for the first time on this venue that I grew up going to. Were and, you nervous? Um, well, like, kind of like Saxy was saying, is that uh, we were well rehearsed, mm -hmm. like practicing at least once a week and to the point where you're like comfortable. But you know what I mean? Uh, definitely still nervous. And um, funny story, our guitar player is like, uh, guitar kind of like, he was going hard and like his guitar kind of like, uh, the input got a little messed up and like it was going in and out the whole show. So it was kind of like, one of those shows where it was like a fucking nightmare. And it was, uh, but we were headlining the show and we, we went with it and did the best we could with it. And it was just made for a very memorable experience. And yeah, so that was like my first experience playing that show. And, and yours? Um, like my first like ever, ever like experience was, um, I was five and uh, her, uh, her parents had me playing piano like at that point just kind of like start off and like I kind of just walked out like into like a stage and just kind of like did it. it, it it's one of those where like I more just remember like the moment than anything really else uh, for guitar at least like it was maybe like second or third grade from there and uh, just doing like do some ZZ Top shit, like not even really anything that's even really like... So I, like, I, I, I picture this could be in ZZ Top style. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no, it was like, you know, it's more like my teacher and, and like wanting to really just like, you know, you know just push something. But yeah. like, yeah, it was a very like interesting time also because like, I guess like, uh, my nerves are more with stuttering just because I have that. But like, um, being able to go on stage and not like have to talk gave me like a different type of like confidence, I guess. Yeah. Because um, I was able to like show myself without having to like do what made me feel awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. That's cool that you use music to, to give, build you that confidence yeah. to get you out oh, yeah. there because I mean, it, because you're basically putting your fears into your music or, play, or what you're playing and stuff like that to get it out there and, and, and it's showing the world. That's pretty fucking awesome. Mad, mad Thank respect. You. For that, Thank you. Okay. Mad respect. And now you. You're the next one. Um, I grew up doing uh, dance and I was, you know, I'd always perform with dance, but it was always with a dance company and stuff, so it was not really by myself. Okay. Um, my father's a musician, so oh, okay. I also grew up in, you know, the environment of shows and what it looked like to rehearse <laughs> and to like get ready for the show. Obviously, I was too young to see the show, and when they would come home and hear about it, and I never played music much. And then we started Zenzag, and I didn't really tell anyone about it <laughs> until we had our first show, and I just invited my parents to it, and they were like, you have a band and like what are you doing in the band and I was like I sing and play keys they're like you play keys and I was like yeah and then so our first show as a band was kind of my first performance I mean before that I'd done like one open mic but okay. really just like on stage with a band and it was a whole different experience because it was like I was a little bit nervous to kind of like you show know everybody. show that yeah especially with like my dad there and stuff and then it's like this whole band we're headlining the event and it's like this whole thing yeah so it was it was really cool and what'd your dad first say first time he was like in awe he was like i didn't even know <laughs> he's like why didn't you tell me he's like my baby girl could do this he's, yeah exactly shit. he's like what the hell is going on and I was that's like, so yeah. rad and so basically so basically fun. what i get from you guys it's your family that that influenced you guys into music and and, yeah, and learning and, and stuff like that and and you know, like you said, your mom got you in the sax. And, you know, saying what you, you know, what you, what you guys used to play. Um, do you know what kind of what musicians inspire you to get to be where you're at to doing what you're doing? Like certain musicians and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's interesting because we make music from like multiple genres because of this. 
Um, so I, I'm very inspired by jazz. So Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, you know, John Coltrane. But I also listen to a lot of rap. Um, so I'm inspired by just the flow of you know certain artists like Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say those you know those two are big for me, just rap and jazz. Some R&B too. Oh yeah, you got to yeah. some R&B in it. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. The sax, you got to do R&B. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> for me as a singer, I. I love Carol King. I mean, she's amazing. She produced and you know wrote like five albums, like thirteen song albums within like three years, something crazy. So she's incredible. And jazz music with like Ella Fitzgerald and just the different range and things like that. Um, what's kind of cool about Zenzag is we, since we kind of play a little bit of everything, our set is like every song is different and every, it's a different genre and it pulls from all of our different influences like we'll put a little something in it mm -hmm. and it it's different every show's different too because whatever we're all hot on and listening to then we're going to add that flavor in to even just songs we play all the time like they, we still approach them differently with yeah. new things so it's kind of an exciting that's awesome yeah and you Oh, um, I'm like a I'm like a rock reggae guy. I grew up listening to System of a Down and Corn. And, cool. I was about to say yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I I started really young listening to like System of a Down, like I was saying, and yeah, I kind of just got heavier as I got older. And then at a certain age, around like probably like 12, around middle school age, I guess, like I started listening to reggae, and so it was just like rebellious music, you know what I mean? A lot of <laughs> rebellious music was uh, my inspiration, obviously, like Bob Marley and like a lot of roots reggae. And um, yeah, and then also listening to like the new, newer age reggae and yeah. everything. And so, yeah, that, that I would say that would be my main influences. Yeah. Did you? Um, to like P, like I also started with like Corn System of Down and stuff. And like, I kind of went from that to like New York hardcore and like, and just punk in a general sense. And I kind of got lighter like as time went on kind of, uh, more to just kind of find what I could do without distortion too. So I started to also just look at like world music and uh, just like Japan and all that other stuff. So like the Fishmans and like, uh, 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 Chus sorry, Chukosaka and like all these just like city public influences too that just like, uh, just like brighten up my sound too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And you guys about to perform the song? Tell us about the song you're about to perform. Yeah, yeah right. so um, we are going to play a song called Middle Road, and uh, it's kind of a cool little story. So, Pat went to go work in Hawaii for a week, and while he was gone, he sent me a voice memo of him just playing the guitar and he was like i have this idea Sweet, yeah well, i came up pretty, like i had i came up with like a little riff i liked you know i was like hey, i was like a little riff i was like a little uh progression and um i so i like recorded it in that moment and um sent it to her and like you know when you send a, a or when you record a voice memo it kind of uh it tells you like the location of the the voice memo and so the street I was on in that time was Middle Road, and oh. so like that's kind of where the name of the song came oh. from because like I sent it to her and said Middle Road, and we kind of went went off of that. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, and it was at the same time there was like a lot of you know political things going on, mm -hmm. and I was kind of like hot on these things, and we had two small kids, and I was just sitting in the hallway and just wrote all my thoughts down while playing his. Uh, voice memo over and over again so it's kind of a different song in the sense that it's not like a verse chorus like it's more just like that's how I feel and we just roll with it and it's kind of I feel like it's kind of a rebellious song and it's kind of just talking out about things that we don't really speak about in a lot of our songs so yeah okay you guys it's got a cool flow? vibe yeah. yeah all right guys here we go Zim dog right here you ready to check this out Yo, yo, we are Zenzag, and this song's called Middle Road. Thank you. 
Dude, that was a dope song. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Thank you. That's a dope song. Hell yeah, dude, that's sick. That's such a good song, very political, very, you know, I, I do see the tunes coming from what, what you're talking about and yeah. everything. Definitely a dope song. Thank yeah. you, thank you. And, and a couple more questions. Um, you know, where can people find you at? Do you guys have like a certain, you know, platform? Um, you all have like um, social media or anything like that? Where people can yeah, find you, guys? you can find us um, everywhere. It's pretty much Zenzag official. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, Spotify, Zenzag. We're on all streaming platforms. Apple Music, yeah. yeah, Apple Music. And we have our website, ZenzagOfficial.com. So, yeah. Sounds like official on everything. Made it easy. <laughs> Find them. These yeah. guys rock, dude. Definitely do. And then, um, a couple another question too is: if you guys got anything coming up for the rest of the year? Anything these, these you know the audience can come see you guys or, or tours or anything like that? Yeah, we are right now. We're working on our first album, so we're you know self-producing it and uh, doing everything for it. So we're really excited. We're kind of taking the rest of the year off from shows and really just buckling down on 
the vibes and recording and kind of getting getting that down. Yeah, we actually just had a, a big show last night with Irie Love and a, and a few. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a good mix of reggae because uh, they're like you know d you know roots reggae yeah. and we're what we would call psychedelic reggae. So it was cool to have that. Uh, but yeah, for the rest of the year, we're just gonna focus on recording. We just want to get some new music out for people. And, uh, yeah, just share it with everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about your album. So you're working on it. So this is gonna be your first album, second first album? one. Yeah. yeah. You guys excited about it or what? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we want people to be able to listen to our stuff when they look us up. So yeah, definitely excited <laughs> to uh, record this album. We have a couple songs out, but we want you know to be able to like sell the physical CDs and shows and just start just getting our uh, our real sound out there to everyone. Our full sound of what we got going so far. So so do you feel like um since this is your first one so this must be a lot of hard work for you guys so you guys got to like work on the times and do y'all have a studio do you do it out of your garage or what uh we have been very blessed um to be able to use uh friend space and so <laughs> we yeah we have kind of the freedom to kind of go at our own pace and to be comfortable it's very homey um great space and yeah it's really you know, we're figuring out our process and what that looks like and what we want our sound to be as we're always kind of approaching things differently. So, um, you know, we are working on our second song tomorrow. We're oh, back, wow. back in the studio tomorrow. So um, I'm sure each song is going to have its own process um, as we kind of get through it. But I think it's going to be a really good um, representation of us at the end. Yeah, it's really cool because, like, we're getting to do it, like, mostly, like, on our own. We're like we are like recording it and uh, uh, like in that space, just kind of by ourselves and just like vibing and just like creating what we feel like uh, uh, I think is right like in that space. Actually, it's really Definitely. nice. Oh yeah, dude. I can't wait to see the album. And that's gonna be like what next year or, or yeah. tomorrow or something. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, we're hoping for uh, you know take the rest of this year to record, um, have the album ready, you know maybe spring summertime yeah, yeah. and. Spring summertime. Spring summertime and hit it hard next year. You know, next year is our third year as a band and we're very we're very determined. We kinda keep ourselves very like, all right, what's next, what's next, what's next? And so it keeps us moving and you know, next year we wanna kind of throw ourselves on some bigger things so you gotta you, go. you gotta have some music out to, to do that so definitely and then uh, the question i want to ask you guys is there's a lot of musicians out there that want to be in the same footsteps where you guys are at is there anything you want to tell those people um i would just say just fuck around and find out i think that nothing <laughs> is out of your limits you know like i taught myself how to play keys two years ago and i had t an infant and a toddler and no sleep so it was you know like this. You just gotta push through. Yeah, literally. If you if you want to do something, just just keep going and keep doing it, and stay true to yourself, and have some fun with it. So. Um, yeah, pretty much. Teach yourself like one of your favorite songs if you're just starting, and just go off of that. You know, see how it makes you feel when you play your instrument, and uh, just put the two things together. Maybe singing and playing, and yeah, just start with playing your first, your favorite song and try to, like, a couple chord song and go from there, you know, just, but just, um, yeah, after that you could just keep improving and, but definitely always to just keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always think of a lesson that I, uh, um, I learned from animation, uh, the dudes that made uh, the show, like, video and, uh, the show Phineas and Ferb, mm -hmm. uh, they had to pitch that show for 10 years th through like multiple companies before like it landed, stuck, and became the empire that it was. So like, just keep on going, it doesn't really matter. Just like, t keep pushing, something will actually happen at some point if you are really determined. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say uh, love the process, um, wherever, whatever that means if you're starting. Um, everyone had a starting point, whether it's athletes that you look up to or musicians, everyone had a starting point. So don't be afraid to be uncomfortable and uh, face those fears, whether it's jumping on stage or playing in front of people for the first time. Once you get over that, it gets easier and better, you know, and you just keep growing uh, one day at a time. Oh, yeah. 
Definitely. That's, yeah. that's, you guys are right 100% on everything you guys said, man. Thank you. Because it, it is true. I mean, it's all about growing. It's about, you know, dedication. It's like you said, you know, that show put it out 10 years. I mean, we've been doing TSM Media for 14 years, just production stuff for seven years, and we just still have fun and love and just keep on grinding, grinding, man. So yeah. thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for having yeah. us. Thank you guys so much coming on. Yeah, you know, you guys rock. Um, guys, you got to go check these guys out, man. They, they download their stuff platforms go to the social media check them out they're definitely rock send out official definitely <laughs> <laughs> and and you guys stick around because we got blockhead day coming up okay yeah What's up, Dave? How you doing? Really good. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, of course. How was the drive up? Yeah, you know, the usual. Did you, get, you drove up from Oceanside, right? Oceanside, yeah. Oceanside. Motionside? Yeah. Is that what you called it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I call it O-side. 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 O-side, yeah. O-side, or, O-side yeah. There's different, different, different names to call it and everything. O-side or no-side? Exactly. <laughs> so, so let's get into it. So what got you into skateboarding? Skateboarding. Well, I grew up in Sacramento area, a town called Roseville, mm-hmm. suburb of Sacramento, and uh, I was 10 years old, and uh, my cousins and grandparents and everything lived more in uh, Central Valley, like Visalia and Fresno, Reedley area, and I was 10, and I went to go visit my cousins. I don't know if it was like a holiday or something, like, and uh, my grandfather made two of my cousins... Um, these like homemade, this is 1974. Okay. And he had found some old shelves behind the post office, you know, like oak boards or whatever. And then uh, he made them these skateboards and they, uh, I saw those, I was like, I want one. And uh, so my grandpa, they took me down to the auto parts store and they had these little like hang card things. And uh, they had the wheels and trucks with like loose ball bearings. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, pr- uh, you know, loose ball bearings, but still like the first urethane wheels. Yeah. I think those, maybe 73, that was, those were invented, urethane wheels. And uh, so yeah, so brought those and I helped my grandfather make the board, you know, I had to do the sanding and the, mm-hmm. you know, varnish on it and all that. And then I just, you know, rode that around with my cousins in the driveway and stuff. I was super psyched on it. and. Uh, and then I went home and, you know, like nobody else had a skateboard in my neighborhood. And then, mm-hmm. and I, I would still ride around some, but uh, then my cousin, or not my cousin, my uh, a friend down the street, he's like, I just got a skateboard. And I was like, I already have one. He's like, what? You already have one? I was like, yeah. And so then I just, you know, since more kids in the neighborhood got them, I started skateboarding and mm-hmm. I was just like, non, you know, nonstop. Yeah. And then, uh, so that was, you know, that was 50 years ago. Yeah, that was, that was yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 50 years ago, I got my first skateboard, and I've never stopped since. That's awesome. So, and and it's cool that they, well, you say you've done it for 50 years, and it's pretty cool because you've seen it grown from different generations, from generations to generations. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you've seen so much, and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, you're like, you're like. Godfather of <laughs> skateboarding, if you think about it, you know, because yeah. you, you've, you've been skating for 50, you know, for 50 years and stuff, so you've seen it all for a long time. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a relatively young sport, you mm-hmm. know, like, and just kind of the first generations of everything. Like, the first contest that I remember that had a master's division, the age cutoff was 28. Really? Because if they would have made it 30, <laughs> there was nobody, <laughs> there would have been like one guy or two guys, you know, so it's... It's like that's young of a sport still where, you know, guys, I mean, I'm not first generation, you know, I think that's more 60s, even though people were skating, you know, like on roller skate, you know, old yeah. roller skates nailed to a board and, you know, earlier 40s, 50s or whatever. But, you know, 60s was really the first generation, but it seemed like not a lot of those guys carried over to the 70s, you mm-hmm. know, the guys in the 60s. And then, you know, it just kind of, there wasn't really like, older guys sticking with it until kind of my generation you know yeah. so i don't know they're growing up with it their whole lives and what kept you going i mean like 
to keep it going, skateboarding and stuff? Like, did you have like something like, like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna keep on doing this. I don't even care what anybody's saying. Or, or did you have like something to motivate you to keep it going for for I so mean, long? Not really. I was never like, you know, a sponsored skateboarder or whatever, mm-hmm. and you know, but I guess for the start of Blockhead, um, which was 1985. Okay. You know, I'd gone to community college for you know like a year or two or whatever and i was going to become an architect and uh and then i interned at this architect and he was like this wolfman jack guy and he's chain smoked in the building he was and, like this. and my eyes were like you know i was crying all the time because of cigarette smoke like cloud in the room and no windows and stuff oh, like no. fake wood paneling and stuff and i was just like is this going to be my life you know it's like am i th- going to be this guy <laughs> and so um so I was like, man, all I really care about is skateboarding. Mm-hmm. And this was, you know, 1984 at the time, and skateboarding was completely dead, you know, because we went through the 70s with the skate park boom. Mm-hmm. And then all at once, all the skate parks, almost all the skate parks shut down because of ins- an insurance thing. Yeah. And, uh, and then hardly anybody skateboarded from, like, 1980 to, like, you know, 85, 86, 87. It wasn't until like, you know, 86, 87, it started to pick up. Mm -hmm. So I was in like in the dead zone of skateboarding and, you know, and I was just like, I want to work in skateboarding. There was a skate shop, go skate. And I would go in there and I'd be like, Hey, can I get a job? And they're like, Oh, we're not hiring. It's like, I wanted to just like get my foot in the door somewhere, you know, but there was really no, there was some industry, but it was all like in Southern California or some in like San Francisco Mm -hmm. area. But Sacramento there was nothing Mm -hmm. and so I had no nothing to like base it on you know I couldn't see like oh they're doing this Mm -hmm. so I could do it like that I was just like (laughs) I I knew nothing you know so so I ended up having some like college money like two or three thousand dollars that my I was supposed to be for my college money and I asked my parents I was like hey could I start a skateboard company with that money and they were like well, it would be a good education, you know, and they're like, come up with a business plan and then we'll let you use, you know, let you use half the garage. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's see that. Cause I, you know, nobody would hire me. I, I didn't, couldn't, there was no other companies to work for. So I was just like, mm. I'll do it myself. Yeah. So, so yeah, so did that, um, gave him my business plan. I was like, look, I can do it. You know, I, I would have to sell this much, whatever the whole thing. And, and, uh, I was gonna make my own wood shop from the start because mm-hmm. I, I, you know, made skateboards like just in the garage and stuff a little bit, and then somehow just ended up like, well, that's too much to take on at one time, so yeah. I'll have uh, someone make the boards, and then I'll just you know screen print them and do all the marketing and sales and all that. So, so it was just like started in '85 and with a full page ad in Thrasher, mm-hmm. and uh, where everyone was telling me like, oh, that's, you know, just do like that's like so much money, you know, like just do like start with like a third of a page or something. I was like, well, nobody will take me seriously unless I do a full page. So I spent like a third of the money I had to my name (laughs) on an ad in Thrasher or something. And then the rest went to the first batches of boards or whatever, the, the street style, the rebel and the chaos were the bottles I launched Mm. with or whatever in 85 and uh, uncle Wiggly in San Diego made the boards and just ship them up to me. That's pretty but uh so I don't know, so yeah, started in the was in the garage for the first year, just screen printing the you know, using the kitchen table as my shipping counter. This you is know, at your parents' house, right? My parents' house, okay. yeah. So and uh yeah, and even um in Thrasher, I was like, Well, I don't have any more money for another phone line. Can I use I asked my parents, can I use the, your number for, and so I was my home phone number our family's home phone number was published in Thrasher for the oh, first year no. and uh, and so but during the day the, my parents were at work so it worked out fine but it was like all of a sudden in the middle of the night at like two in the morning it would get a call from Japan or something and my parents would be like hello like, like, no, 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 no. can you call back during the you know <laughs> during business hours <laughs> um, we sleep at the factory <laughs> um, Dave, Dave makes us sleep here <laughs> yeah so so yeah then it, after a year or something I, I was able to get there was a skate shop opened up 
in Roseville, and then they were like, oh, the building in the back, there used to be an old dentist office, mm -hmm. and this older woman in her 80s, she's going to rent it out. And, you know, I was like, oh, that could be cool. How much is rent? And they're like, oh, $200 a month. I was like, I'm in. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I did that for uh, 85 to 89. Okay. And then I had an opportunity to uh, license it, my, the company, to Tracker. And so... Because you, you, you joined up with them, didn't you? Or? Well, it was a licensing thing. Okay. I mean, I always owned a blockhead. It was just a licensing thing okay. where I... And, uh, Jim Gray, who's here, was uh, instrumental in helping me get down, down, you know, down south here. So there you go. So I moved down, and you know, the rest is history. It, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. And, and you built such a solid team. I mean, you have a lot of good writers on on Blockhead. I mean, yeah. how going through, going back. I mean, how did you build a, a, a good legendary team for so many years? On Blockhead, like, did you go through like so many different videotapes? Did you skate with half of these people? Like, how did you build your team? I mean, it was a combination of it. You know, the first Blockhead Pro was uh, Sam Cunningham, mm -hmm. and he, you know, like, I have photos of Sam skating the ramp at my, at my house. You know, my, at my parents' house, we had a couple different ramp things, mm -hmm. and and uh, like we had been friends since like high school days, even though he went to a different high school. Mm -hmm. But uh, so then, you know, Sam was like local legend like the you know best all-around guy to come out of sacramento as far as like in that era as mm -hmm. far as like he could do it you know six foot air on a vert ramp but he could also you know ollie down stuff and you know he was like king of the coffin banks and <laughs> you know like i don't know he he was just and sam's like he's an amazing person too mm -hmm. like just nicest guy so we've been friends forever and uh he was the first pro and then you know got like jim gray and then, you know, just it just kind of like snowballed. You know, it, was, it started like our crew around there, and then we you know, reached out to sponsoring some San Francisco guys mm -hmm. or like, you know, Modesto. You know, like we kept like slowly like reaching out farther and farther. You know, we had a great local scene. You know, as far as the shop there. You know, like I was like constantly like bringing them boards every day to you know restock the shop because we we're selling so much stuff That's just out good. of that shop you know and then all the local shops mm -hmm. so then the next thing was just to get out worldwide you know and, and how, did but, that, how did that make you feel go worldwide i mean were you like <laughs> whoa I, I you started from being in the garage with two thousand dollars in your pocket starting yeah. it and then now you're worldwide i mean yeah. that, that probably like a big shock to you huh yeah for sure i, I remember yeah i got a awh i caught just cold called a, a distributor awh and I'd only sold, you know, a couple of hundred boards at this at this point or whatever. And I called them up, and they were like, "Oh, who's making your boards?" I'm my like, Uncle Wiggly, and they're like, "Oh, we did do good with them." I was like, "Well, I have these boards or whatever," and they're like, uh, "We want 200 boards." And I was just like, "I about like <laughs> shit my pants right then." I was like, "I was like, I couldn't believe it. Someone wanted 200 of my, of my boards." And, you know, You're sweating too, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah. So that was like the first big order that I got, and that kind of like gave me confidence to like, all right, I'm gonna call these guys in, you know, in a, you know, UK or try to like, you know, anyone I could find, I could mm -hmm. their number, I could call, you know, because different times back then, you know, you didn't have the resources no. that you have now. You, you, you didn't know? have Google yeah. or. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot harder back then. To so so 200 boards was your first one, huh? The first big distributor order, yeah. yeah. So how'd you how'd you get all that two hundred boards going? I mean, did you like have to scrounge up money, or did you like? Yeah, it, well, I think when I got that order, I had to, you know I had to borrow money from People. family members yeah. and stuff. I was like, oh, I got the board, or I'll pay you back. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you had to write the note, write a piece yeah. of paper. I got you. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's that's pretty cool to really you know look back and seeing. You know how what skateboarding is now to what skateboarding when you were growing growing up and, and doing and stuff. It's yeah. a way big difference, you know. Yeah. So there's probably I don't know if it's culture shock for you to see how skateboarding has changed a lot or what. What's your what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, I mean I've just been in it so much. It's just not like I was away and then now it's shocking or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I've seen every step of the way. I guess. So nothing is shocking. Yeah. Or uh, whatever. There's still stuff that, when you think it can't progress anymore, it progresses. It progresses. You're like, 
you know, there's never going to be a point where everything's been done. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's always a new trick. Like, how did they think to combine those two tricks into this one trick? Or, or it, it's really cool to see like people skate a spot creative. You know, because there's certain spots where, you know, like the trick is navigating the spot. You know, yeah. kind of thing. You know, and that's what's cool about skateboarding and being able to explore and, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, as far as team stuff, back to that, I guess, you yeah. know, like it kept going, you know, like Omar was like Jim Gray's, lived in Jim Gray's neighborhood and stuff. So we kind of like, you know, when we were still up in Sacramento, start sponsoring Omar and then uh, Rick Howard was actually a sponsor me video. No way. Yeah. <laughs> and so we would get our, you know, like, weekly you know we would get you know, I don't know how many a week or whatever and so we would sit down in this room with a couch or whatever and, and just like everyone you know crack a beer and everyone's like and they'll be like all right this is this week's and some of them of course you know like we wouldn't make it through some of them it's like all right next one or whatever and then Rick Howards came on and it was just like he had it somehow through his mom, like had they knew a video guy or whatever, mm -hmm. and it was like professionally edited and stuff, <laughs> and it had this countdown at the beginning, like this heartbeat, like thump thump, thump thump, thump thump, <laughs> and it came on, and we're just like, where did this come from? Where did this guy come from? Is from Canada? What? And uh, so like that one was like, as soon as we popped it out of the VCR, like I was on the phone with them, mm -hmm. I was like. And the cool thing was, is he was already writing some blockhead boards in his sponsor me video. Oh, that's awesome. So I was like, this guy didn't just send them to everyone, you know. Mm -hmm. He sent it to blockhead because he wants to be on blockhead. Yeah, because he was already representing. He's those. not just like, you know, because a lot in you know in skateboarding you get the guys who like, I'm good at skateboarding. Somebody owes me something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't really think of it as like. They just feel like they're owed because they paid their dues or whatever. Yeah. It's like nobody owes you anything. You have to earn it, and you know you are helping the company sell boards to stay in business. Yep. You know, it's like a mutually thing. You know, and, and you, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's mostly like younger kids that don't get that. You know, yeah. they send their sponsor me video, and they, you know. And they're wearing Nike shoes, but you're you're, you're a different shoe company. You know, like what, what's yeah. going on here? <laughs> And and but you, but going from you know how finding Rick Howard, so I mean you also found Laban, you also found yeah. Jeremy Ray, Rick J. I mean names go on and on and on. Yeah. I mean and you built such a great, amazing legendary company that that was a staple to, to me and probably to a lot of people was a staple to skateboarding. You know and, and watching those guys and watching what you built up, I mean it, it's it's very inspiring. Thank you. You know, and, and so out of all the videos that you, you guys film, what was your, you know, your favorite one, to, to, a story of, of filming and stuff? I know, I know there's a lot out there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the first one was uh, Splendid Eye Torture. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, filming in 89. I don't think it came out until 1990. So that was like right when we moved down south. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had a video camera. You know, because I couldn't afford one before that, you know, and, and nobody was really making videos, you know, until Powell mm -hmm. did, did the, you know, did their first videos. But uh, um, so, I don't know, where are we going with this? The, the, what, was, what was it was like making your <laughs> Well, that, yeah, yeah, that, so that video, um, it was just like so cool to be the first time we were exposed to it. And so we were just like went overboard. We we're so excited about we get to do this we get mm -hmm. to make a video and so just the pure raw excitement was just there on the first one you know the first time you do anything mm -hmm. it's just more exciting i guess you know but but it's kept me um you know that kept me energized to do more videos and then even once stop doing you know well blockhead and visible 16 did the, the companies that um that I was involved in. Um, even after that, um, we started doing TV show stuff. Mm -hmm. Laban and I were, you know, from that, you know, doing uh, American, Mi Laban did American Misfits. Oh, that was and my then, favorite thing. You know, I, I was that. doing like Blue Torch TV and oh, Invert TV and, and uh, uh, Captain and Casey show. We did stuff for that. Hey, and rest, then, rest uh, in peace, man. Yeah. 
Rest in peace on them. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then uh, built a shred. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> worked worked on that show for I don't know three or four years or whatever, and then uh, so I don't know that was an amazing time to you know be able to use stuff that I had like built ramp building stuff throughout my life and just the creative creativity and and all that yeah. I don't know, that was just a really rewarding experience you know so, so so you had a lot of experience so not just skateboarding but you also got involved in, the, in on the production side like TV stuff and everything the production stuff yeah so that was kind of like a big different change for you coming from skateboarding you think skateboarding helped you out a little bit on the production side of well like- of course so yeah like doing uh the skateboard videos it was just kind of a natural you know roll over into that you know mm-hmm. into doing tv production stuff or whatever and then yeah with the built to shred it's you know i was always building stuff i always had ramps you know starting from my parents house you know and then uh, we had a big ramp out in uh, Roseville Mm -hmm. that was like had a hip and a corner and it was like one of the first well the one of my parents house was one of the first corners ever built yeah for a skateboard ramp if not I don't I don't think it was the first one but uh but it it uh, was around there right yeah around there (laughs) but uh and then you know then when I moved down south I was able to when I licensed the company I was able to free up some of my money that I tied up in inventory and I was Mm -hmm. able to buy a house. And my sole thing I wanted to do was find a house where I could build a giant ramp, you know? (laughs) And so, so yeah, I did that, built a, bought the house, built a giant ramp, you know, kind of like the, the blockhead ramp Mm -hmm. as you know, everyone called it. But uh, yeah, that was the first. That's still in your backyard, right? Well, a version of it. Version of it. Yeah. So the first one, that was kind of like the first backyard, ramp to have like corners and hips and spines and mm-hmm. like just the the biggest you know like it was probably like the biggest coolest backyard ramp of the, of its era you know and it was like everybody was at your house right yeah everyone was on people coming through like you know non-stop coming through you know like s- people showing up in my door you know I'm from, hey, Dave, I'm we're from here. germany like can i skate your ramp you know and, you know people would like dream about come and escape the ramp you know damn that's pretty that's yeah, pretty cool to, cool yeah. to people knock on your door anytime hey we're over here to skate <laughs> we were pretty open with it you know you know for the most part you know and it's, uh, yeah like Laban was out there and I think he mentioned like yeah my friend Dan's gonna come through sometime you know it wasn't like cell phone days yeah, or whatever. Yeah. he was like uh, Dan Drahobo or whatever and so I kind of knew he was coming but then I woke up in the morning and made myself some coffee and I look out I was like Who's sleeping on my front lawn? <laughs> <laughs> and it was Drahobel and a buddy of his or whatever. <laughs> so I was like, that was the first time I met, you know, like Drahobel, you know. So, but so many people, rippers, skated the ramp, you know, like Wade Spire and, mm-hmm. you know, you know Tony Hawk, Chris Miller, you know, Ben Schroeder. Yeah. I mean, just like, you know, Peter Hewitt. I mean, I can't even. Yeah, there's names. There's, yeah, there's a list, you know, like, <laughs> of people who, who skated there, you know. Yeah. And, uh. So, I don't know. That was a cool era. That's right. So, that's definitely right. And I still have a I still have a ramp that's it's the original coping from the ramp, but it's a different configuration. And we just recently um, fixed it up for my 60th birthday. Okay. And uh, hold on, hold on. You're 60. Well, you don't look 60, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, th- I, I thought I thought you like 45 over here, man. <laughs> aged quick. Uh, skateboarding's aged me. It's kept me young. <laughs> kept, kept you young, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, re, re, for my 60th birthday, I fixed up the ramp and had a big fun party and all that. Yeah. And uh, had all, you know, a lot of the old blockhead guys come out and a lot of friends. And, and uh, so, yeah, so the ramp lives again. The current version, I've had it for like 19 years, I think. Oh, wow. And, uh, but yeah, it's the original coping from the one from 89. Okay. So it's kind of. And and you gave us in, and you gave us a video. Tell us about this teaser we're about to watch. All right, so so I don't know, maybe two and a half years ago, because um, I guess current. Let's uh, let's I guess we need a little background on this. So I relaunched Blockhead okay. in 2015. Okay. And that when I relaunched, it was probably mostly it was mostly reissues, mm-hmm. and then it was. Um, you know some modern stuff but all with like the same the original art on yeah. it so 
so yeah so then just it just kind of like i really didn't intend on like forming a team and stuff because it was just like we're i'm just selling reissues and everyone's just buying those for nostalgia reasons or whatever and then it just kind of evolved into where we were kept you know our you know longtime friends you know with laban and uh we just you know and i was like send sam some stuff and jim some stuff and we just kind of all of us kept skating together more and more especially with laban and uh and so we then we started going on trips together and doing all this stuff and and you know rec- more recently we didn't went to like montana and then we went to colorado but uh so a few years uh two and a half years ago or so laban was like he was going to turn 50 and so he's like, I really, I want to make a skateboard part. He's like, I want to make a video part. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where it's going to go, whatever, but I just feel like I have at least one good part in me, you know, like left, you know, mm-hmm. like, but I, we all know he's, that's, he's going to have one when he's 60, <laughs> probably 70, too, 80, or whatever. 90. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he's not saying it's his last part. He's just like, he just wanted to do one yeah. for, his, for 50 or whatever. And so he started working on that and then got a few like tricks that he was happy with or whatever. And then just kept like putting the bug out there. Like, you know what, we should just do a blockhead video. And I was like, nah, that's like too much work. You know, like that's like, that's such a big undertaking. And then, you know, he's like, well, I'll help with it and, and all that. So, so then we just pulled the trigger on it. And then, you know, like Chris Lambert was doing, he was kind of doing his own mm-hmm. stuff with like ESP and, and, uh, and uh, through COVID, whatever, what didn't really work out to do boards anymore. Mm-hmm. And so we'd always skated with him, you know, since back, you know, for the last 20 Something years good. or whatever, yeah. you know, he was always part of our crew anyhow. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to be a part of it. <laughs> and we're like, Dude, yeah, come, of course, you know, come on over. And uh, so, yeah, then, you know, some other guys like Jesse Hotchkiss, who we skated with all the time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, so yeah, we we just started going on more skate trips, Joshua Tree, and you know all this stuff, and then so we've but just been working on this video for the last two and a half years, and uh, the video is called Heads Up. Okay. And uh, I don't know, we were just really trying to like make something that that was fun, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, we're obviously still like we're trying to push, you know, push ourselves mm-hmm. to do stuff that we hadn't done for like five years, 10 years, or even ever, you yeah. know? But at the same time, you know, we're no, we know we're not like, can't compete with all these kids <laughs> and what they're doing. Wait, you're, not, so, you're not jumping down handrails, doing a half cab, board slide, whatever out. <laughs> so, so yeah, but we, you know, you know, we can, we make, you know, try to make skateboarding fun because yeah. we have fun skateboarding. It's, yeah, you know, block, it's all blockheads always been about fun mm-hmm. as much as, you know, more than being, rad i guess you know even even though we had some of the raddest dudes you know like we still try to make it fun yeah. you know and uh well that's so, how I, that's how i remember blockhead videos yeah. it's always fun it's always those commercials always little fun things yeah. you guys did in it and stuff yeah. yeah so heads up we've been uh working on that for two and a half years or whatever mm-hmm. and i guess uh i guess this is the trailer for it there you go well you ready to show everybody yeah let's let's go well, let's go we'll see it right here <laughs> check it out I'm taking this part really seriously. There's just no time for any ridiculous skits. Hey, let's go strip mall surfing.
Well, dude, I was, I'm excited to see this video, man. Yeah. And that was a sick little trailer. Thank you, thank you. And, and do you know when that's coming out, or? That, it might be out by the time this drops. Okay. We're just trying to work out some timing, but you know, okay. the video's done. It's just kind of whenever it's up on YouTube and then uh, linked from the Thrasher site okay. as well. But uh, is it okay to say Thrasher on here? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say Thrasher over here. <laughs> you can say well, whatever you want to say. It's one big family. Exactly. And, and you got some people with you. Tell who you're with. Well, this right here is Laban Fidius. What's and, up? And then uh, Howdy. Jim Gray. Did I say that right? I, I think you said it's hard to okay. pronounce. It's yeah. difficult. And, yeah. hey, you did better than I would. Jim Gray. <laughs> Sorry, so, so welcome, you guys, coming on the show, sitting in with... Um, I'm back. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> Been here before. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I welcome back. So for you guys being part of this video and part of Blockhead, tell us your experience. Well, let me get something straight to start. They made the video. Okay. I've just been part of Blockhead for a long time, and I had a good time participating in whatever way. They made this video. Dave's the star of the video, because yeah. this is his first time he's had a part of his own, and he's 60 years old, and when you see him do this rail, that's like it's a different kind of rail, but still, at 60-year-old, people are going to be like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. This is like, yeah. he, he blew some minds. This is awesome. Well, and, and you, you might have saw it in Thrasher a couple issues ago, and it's a 100-foot grind down a mountain. So, at 60, that's, that's pretty good. I was pretty yeah. impressed. Yeah. I was only there for the day one of uh, shooting uh, where it didn't, it didn't go well. It didn't, yeah, <laughs> it, it didn't look, I'm sure it didn't look like I was going to do it. No. I think the first day I only made it like a third of the way and fell into the bushes and, you know. It's dedication though because I think how many tries total did it take you to um, make it? I mean, according to the, the, you know, camera takes, like I counted the clips and it was like, 850 tries <laughs> <laughs> and multiple so, times five, going back five, five days five days well because the thing was it was like it was at that skate spot shred mountain mm -hmm. and so we we had to cut out this uh i went up there walking the dogs and uh because i was thinking i want to do a long grind because mm -hmm. i had done some stuff uh on my 57th birthday, like my buddy does these rails called Blunt Steel. Okay. Yeah. My buddy Steel. Renee. And uh, I conned him into making, a, uh, putting together a 57 foot rail <laughs> that I wanted to do on my 57th birthday. I was like, because I was like, I better just do it now because I'm kind of in the zone. It would be nice to wait till I was 60 and do a 60 foot yeah. rail. But I was like, in three years, I don't know, you know, can I do this? <laughs> and uh, so I did that, and so I was like pretty confident I could do a long rail, but I wanted to find something kind of in the wild, yeah. you know. And so I looked and looked, and I finally walking the dog, I, I found this, and I saw all these like irrigation pipes, and I, but they were like straight down the mountain, like, and so yeah, so even like whatever Milton Martinez would probably just splat at the bottom. <laughs> it was like so steep, and then you would ride like. You know, 12 feet and then fly off. You know, to your, and, and you know, this at 60, right? Well, no. So, so I was like, I noticed that they were like broken at the top. I was like, nobody's used these pipes for like 20 years. It was like irrigation to yeah. maybe when the forest was like first planted or whatever. And uh, so I was like, they don't use these. They they wouldn't miss them if they were gone. <laughs> and so we went up there and you know brought the you know the grinder and the you know all the tools plump, uh, you know pipe wrenches and stuff and just disassembled the thing and carried the big sections of the they're like 20 thing. feet long each right well the first section we did we it was like 60 feet that we tried to move all in one section yeah and then um and then we found another piece that was like 40 feet long you know? they were heavy so yeah they were heavy and so awkward it people, was hard how many, how many people carried it well, Lambert was there, Jesse Lambert was there, just, I was there. Yeah. It, it took all of us undoing the coupling and then yeah. recoupling it back up once we got it yeah. on, the, on the angle. So, so then, yeah, once we set it up though, like it was, this was like a skate spot, you know, this is where, you know, you'll see in the video, this is where we all skated for the video Shred mm -hmm. Mountain. And it was actually something, we built some of the stuff for a Built Shred episode. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we've been skating the spot since like 1989. It was like in a blockhead ad for, dirt clods wheels mm -hmm. and uh the stretch stretch planks and uh so we've been you know skating that for you know s since way back but uh you couldn't leave it set up though see, because yeah, if other people saw it like any other skaters saw mm -hmm. it, they 
we had to disassemble it and hide it, basically. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause, cause For, like, which is a lot take, of work. That was a lot of work. It would yeah. just take, you know, some kid to go there and like, oh, I'm going to crooked grind this whole thing. <laughs> you know, it's like. Maybe. Uh, wait till you crush see your it. Crush your 60-year-old ego. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, one fell swoop. I was, like, I was like, I've been, you know, this has been in my mind for the last, like, couple years. And we put all this work into it. So I want yeah. to have someone, like, snake me on it. So we, <laughs> so we had to disassemble it every day. I think the first day we left, because we were going to come back in the morning. So we left it, but then after that, and this was like during uh, when it was raining and stuff, so okay. it was like it was like all muddy and no, stuff. Nobody's and going up there. People were going up there, but it's like just had to wait. You know, just we had to wait between tries, like two mm -hmm. weeks. Uh, you know, between each one, kind of. You know, and then uh, and you were broke off a couple times. I, I took some slams on it. Nothing, nothing too terrible. I mean, I fell on my neck pretty much once on the on the rail because it was like. <laughs> Since this pipe had been there for like, you know, 40, 50 years, it was like galvanized pipe mm -hmm. and it grinded real inconsistently because all of a sudden you would just, because we waxed it, but not, we didn't want to overdo it because I didn't want to be going like 60 miles yeah. an hour at the end, you know? So, so it was like a fine line to get the right amount where you wouldn't stick and then, or you wouldn't grind too fast. Because the, yeah. the landing is a little bit uphill, it's right? Uphill, so it's yeah. like, it's, you, you got to be so ready for it a little yeah. bit. It's yeah. kind of slippery when you land too, Yeah, isn't it? it's a little yeah, sketchy. And then, and then there was like the, the connectors because they connect on the outside of the pipe, the threaded thing. So we had to like grind those. But every time you would hit one, it was like, cocoon. Yeah. Kunk, kunk, kunk. <laughs> and some of those would throw because they stuck up a good like three right. eighths of yeah. an inch or I'm something. Because you know? you're going like this. Like yeah, this. yeah. So we, I tried to angle them and stuff, but you yeah. still definitely felt them. During that time when uh, Dave was trying to conquer this rail, I had spoke to him a few times. I, I, I only went there and filmed the first day where it wasn't a success. I think Lambert was there every single day with yeah. you, helping <laughs> reset it up, build bigger runways for you to make this. He was your motivator, right? And, he was. He and was. film her motivator everything and and uh and uh but I, I talked to you a couple times and he was losing his gourd in a weird way like he was so i was like i was like scared for dave i was like if he doesn't make this like i don't know what's going to happen to him like everything is about this grind and yeah. and and he had to make it yeah. especially yeah. because the thrasher had like shot a photo and and um it's, it's got to, it's going it's got to come out yeah it's yeah. got to come out in the magazine yeah. and so, so so they threw they threw on a bus on that one they yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because people were like, "Yo, where is that footage at?" Yeah. <laughs> well, you 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 you'll see it and heads up. They'll you'll see it and heads it. up. They'll get to see it. I don't know how he's still yeah. walking. Yeah. I mean, how could you go down that 800 times? Yeah. Jesus. I, I would like you know, no. Would you? Hell no. I have a rule: three tries. If you don't make something in three tries, it's not worth doing. You come back and you try it again later. Yeah. It's 800 foot. It's a psychotic, 60 year old psychotic man. Yeah, he was. Gray hair and gray in the head too. Yeah. So that's all right. Yeah. But I love. Uh, it. But that's like the. Not everything in my part is like that. That was like my one grail kind of thing yeah. that I really wanted to push myself. And the rest, most of the rest of it is more fun stuff or whatever. I mean, yeah. I took slams, whatever, and I did push myself, but that was like my one grail. The, that the, I was, the one that you can like. That I was like, I'm going to try this thing until I make it or I die. Yeah, you can took it on your bucket list. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's done. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to top that. <laughs> yeah, but you did a lot of stuff a lot yeah. of us aren't going to do. Yeah. So, yeah, tell them about the, the important part of this video, which is, you know, when we sat and they calculated, this is the average age of the video. No one's ever done a video where the average age is. Yeah. I would say the ad average age is 52. Is that he correct? Likes, he likes to say that because that's how old he is. But yeah. 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 It's probably 51. It's somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Sam and I are both 61. And then we got, what's yeah. the youngest guy? 30 well, there was something? A couple, there was a couple changes here and there. The, Big one was our buddy from the Invisible Days, Christian Svitak. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. We, yeah. you know, like Mike V is doing Black Flag, and just so successful doing that right now that, and such on a demanding tour schedule or whatever, mm -hmm. he just decided like I can't really do Street Plant right now and and do it justice. So, yeah, we this was like three weeks before we were gonna premiere the video mm -hmm. i was talking to christian you know talking to him for like 15 20 minutes and he's like oh what do you think about me writing for blockhead <laughs> i was like wait what and he told me the whole story or whatever and i was like well of course you know it's yeah that was like not 
a question. I was like, well, I got to run it by the guys, of course. But uh, <laughs> of course, he know. calls me, and then I hear it's Christian. I'm like, oh hell yeah, are you kidding? Yeah, like, Down for Christian. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's you know we discovered him through a sponsor me video. Yep. And then Laban went out to and met him in I think Pittsburgh. I don't know, tell a little bit pay, about pay, that. Paid him his first money. He couldn't believe it. Well, okay. When he sent his sponsor me video in, it was, I don't know, like 20 tw- minutes. 25 minutes. Tw- it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, a sponsor me video. And it was like, usually you wouldn't watch it, but yeah. like every couple minutes, like a banger would happen, like something really good. And you're like, whoa, I got to keep watching now. But then you're like, this is horrible filming. This is awful. <laughs> like, what is going Just, on? And then you're like, oh my gosh, that was good too. So I called him. I literally called him and I, and I, he thought it was a joke. He thought it was his friend pranking him. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is Laban. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Hey, Laban. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I was like, listen, I got your sponsor me video. And, uh, and I was like, listen, you got to pay attention to your filmer. You know, you got to pay attention. I want to see a part where you can drop it into one of our videos and it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. If you're going to take this seriously, and I, I was like, I'm going to send you a package and I want to see you film a part on that package. Literally, we sent him the package and I want to say in a couple weeks later, he filmed a perfect part. Mm-hmm. Like he was, he was into it. And, uh, and we got it back and we're like, okay, he's got, he's he's got what it takes. And then I also, I flew out there and, and visited him and, uh, and we did demos and I was, I was, uh, thoroughly impressed with his skateboarding yeah. you know so <laughs> so he, yeah just almost like i don't want to say christian had a death wish but he kind of had a death <laughs> wish <laughs> and just like some of the the first thing like where well, there's a set of stairs there's a ledge down it but like after the stairs it's like 15 feet and then there's a brick wall oh yeah and, and there was like, sewer what it was wet on the bottom too yeah and it, yeah and i i was just i saw it and i was like hey do you think you could do this and, and he's like, yeah, I'll try. Like, but there's the drop is like crazy on this. And he did, he it was did like, it. What, 30, First, 30 stairs or something? 30 or? stairs down a ledge with a, a few feet into a wall. And I almost, I was like, I was, I was like, my, he, he can, he can go for it. <laughs> like, I was like, well, he really wants this, you know, yeah. and it was, it's true. Like, and he's still skating yeah. and pushing it. So three weeks before the video, he gets on, but he doesn't have time to film a part. But, you know, you sent him some boards, and he got a little teaser in there. Yeah, a little, a little teaser. But the, he's also been on a mission. He's about to turn 50 next March or whatever. So he's been on a mission to film a 50-year part. Yeah. And so he didn't want to break off some of that because he has a – Christian has a vision, you know what I mean? And it's not just like, oh, I'll refilm, film something different. He's like, no, this is a plan, you know. Yeah. He's very, a very uh, plan kind of guy. Yeah. But uh, so that's going to drop next year. So this okay. was just like a little teaser. For this you. was like B grade stuff or C okay. grade stuff, you okay. know. He just wanted to but put to something us, to in us, there. To us, will be A grade. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. But I know he wants to let people know, like, this isn't my best effort. Yeah. You know, th- this isn't what I've been filming for the last like two years. Like we had a like, premiere in uh, in Ohio a couple weeks ago, and he got up and first goes, "This is not very good." I mean, he was like, he spent two minutes just saying how shitty his footage was because he's like, I "Wanted to tell that I can do better than this," but, <laughs> but because I wanted to be part of this, I joined in there, so I gave him my crap footage and the good stuff I'm still holding. It was really pretty funny. He was he was very uh, concerned that people knew that that was his crappy footage that he gave. So wait, wait. So how did that? Because that's the only block at premiere that we didn't go to is yeah, the that one that not, you hosted. Yeah. How how did that? It was awesome. It was really cool. I go to this group thing every year called the Welfare Line Skateboard Collectors. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have this thing called the Bash. It was the ninth year. I've been going there since the first year. Uh, Christian's from Ohio. It ha- takes place in Ohio. So we have it at this guy Jim's house. Um, he has a barn with a big bowl in it. Uh, put a movie theater inside his 6,000 square foot barn. There's like 200 people in there. It was so cool and soulful. All the guys are like 40, 50. So, I mean, these guys are older guys. They were super stoked, super yeah. pumped on it. Um, and I think they were really hyped because it's, it's everything. And this is what the video is all about. Fun. That's truly all about fun. Tricks, I mean, we all have our own philosophies to be tricks, like whatever. You do tricks all day long. If you're having fun, you're skateboarding. Okay, and this shows that with all the ages of these different guys, everyone's just having fun. And these guys are all out there just going, I mean, a lot of them aren't even great skateboarders. They're just guys who love skateboarding. So to see someone going, dude, they're just dorking off, having a great time, that's inspiring to them. Watching a really gnarly video where everyone's doing crazy bangers, that's like, they're like, okay, that blows my mind. It's not inspiring to me to go skateboarding. It's just blowing my mind. <laughs> These guys dorking off is inspiring me to go skateboarding. So that's the best thing about this video. I think young and old will be like, holy crap, 
I'm going to go have fun today on my skateboard. I'm not going to waste an hour trying to do the gnarliest trick I've ever done. I'm going to go freaking dork off and, and roll away laughing. Yeah. And that, I think this video did. So the crowd there was awesome. It was a great premiere and everybody was super stoked on it. So. And, and you guys done premieres too, right? Yeah, I think we did, wait, was it six, including Ohio? We did uh, Oceanside, Los Angeles, uh, Sacramento, um, two in Portland. Yeah, and then Ohio. And then Ohio, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, we, what it's was like. reaction for those? Same thing, or? I mean, kind of the same thing Jim's saying. People were just like, re people were really hyped on it and inspired to skate. And, you know, you know, even like younger people were inspired by it, you know, awesome. even though we're not like doing tricks that, you know, maybe that are beneath them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think there's a lot of the younger kids and generations that are like looking at older tricks and like, taking those and trying them in a different way. I think it's yeah. awesome, like the whole thing with like thinking creatively and like the stuff that we've been doing for a long time. Sometimes I was gonna say, I wanna give these guys a lot of credit because the whole, you know, American Misfits built to shred, you know, that was happening at Dave's dental office back in the day, like wacky little ramps to wall ride in the funky backyard. And that carried on and spread with all these guys and literally, it, it shows that you can make stuff out of nothing and you don't have to just be gnarly to be having fun skateboarding. Yeah. So I think that's something they brought back is to show any age, go have fun on your skateboard. Yep. Dork off. Being a dork on a skateboard is yeah. awesome. Being serious is like, serious? Who the fuck wants to be serious? And it's like, I mean, there's a time and a place where I we mean, were pro time. skaters. I mean, yeah, for sure. If there's been, it's in the Olympics right now. Like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but that's not what most people do every day on a skateboard. They just want to have fun. So yeah, this is, this is inspiring. And I, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of respect for you guys for keeping that alive. You know, and I will, I will go on record saying I have my own skateboard company, you know, at Acme for a long time and I loved my company. Blockhead's probably the coolest skateboard company from the day at it, it, inception up to today that never did lame crap. Really, even they did hiatus a little bit, but they always put out good stuff. So they've really fun, quality, the art. I mean, everything's always been really on point. And I'd say historically, it's the coolest fucking skateboard company ever. <laughs> Fuck you, Santa Cruz. <laughs> Fuck you, Powell. <laughs> you know, it's like no. And I love them. I love. I know, Dave, I'm Powell's good friend. But I mean, but Calm still, down, buddy. they all had lame periods. They all had periods where, for five years, ago, oh my god, what are you doing? Oh my god, you guys should, you guys should go away and hide. You know, it's like, but I mean, Blockhead never did. Blockhead has had nothing but 100. Hey, calm down. Stuff. So I mean, and I mean that. I mean that sincerely. I'm, st I'm super stoked to be part of it. I'm the lamest guy on the team. I'm seriously the biggest dork ever who just played my part. And you know, because I, you know, had my connections and I helped things yeah. along the way but still you know i mean i'm not the, i'm by far I'm probably the worst guy who's ever skated for blockhead but i have a good time hey i will say in, in that uh, that there is a trick in the video if you can call it that but it's a combo trick between chris lambert mm -hmm. and jim it's gray very, it's very romantic it's yes. very <laughs> romantic and, it, and yeah, if you guys yeah, you're seeing square yeah. dancing you know yeah, there's it's something like a whole bunch of like <laughs> it's a double daffy it's kind of like a square daffing double daffy i don't know do -si do daffy it's never been done and it happened naturally because we're just having fun and, dork and dorking around. the dorkiest around. thing ever done, and I'm very proud to say that's my part of the video. Yeah. Not the gnarliest trick I ever did. You know, no, so. it's awesome. It just happened. Yeah. It was hilarious, and it was great. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I, I have something else to bring up, and uh, Jim mentioned art, and Ron Cameron, who did, I did art for the first year of Blockhead, mm -hmm. like 85 through 86, and then there was this younger kid around Sacramento, I think he was like 16 at the time, and uh, Ron Cameron, and we started like hooking him up, you know, because he was like crazy, creative street skater, and you know, jump ramp could like do the most contorted airs of anyone, you know, and, uh, and then after a while, he was just like, hey, I do some art stuff, you wanna see it? And he showed me some like sketchbooks, and I was like, what? And then, he, he's, then his first thing was like the first Sam Cunningham with the big, you know, evil eye, the bug right, eye guy. Yeah. He did that. He drew that. And then I was just like, fuck. I was like, <laughs> you, you do all everything for now. I'm just going to concentrate on sales. Yeah, you're way better than I am. So uh, you do the art, you know. Yeah. And so that kind of like passing the torch on that or whatever. I mean, I still did some stuff here and there or whatever. But... Um, so Ron, again, he never had a full part in Blockhead. He was had a few tricks in Splintered Eye Torture, but uh, but he never filmed the full part. And in this video, he's got a full, he's part, got a full part, and it's awesome. A and, very uh, creative full part. And yes, yeah, Ron's I can't wait to see. It. Yeah, Ron's uh, skateboarding is like his art in a way. It's just you know thinks outside the box, and he's very outside thinks outside the box, and he's very creative. Yeah, and he has like 
the skills to like turn, you know, like, I mean, because I think some of us, like myself, have a creative mind in skateboarding, but I can't turn that into reality on yeah. a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? But I think, you know, like Ron has more of that ability to turn that into, into reality. It's uh, kind of a big deal. It's, a, it's yeah, his yeah, first it's his video part. part, a skateboard video part. He's an he's a amazing artist. Yes, if but, you guys are one of the best skateboard artists really in the history of skateboarding, one of those top of, 10 guys like that, at an amazing skate park. Yeah. Yeah, skate park, you won't usually see that. Yeah. Most of the other guys, they can ride a skateboard or have rolled on a skateboard. No, this is, yeah. this is riding a skate. This is ripping. This is yeah. fun. This is and creative. cool tricks. Like cool tricks. And, creative and tricks. Incredible, like, actual art direction, if you want to call it, or yeah. creative direction of how it flows from part to part. It's, it's really well done. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are getting me excited to see this. And, and, I'm, I'm ready to watch Well, because it. it's fun. That's the rad thing. You're stoked to be. It's not like, we're doing videos, the raddest thing was ever done. It's like, no, it's fun, dude. You're going to watch it and go, God, I want to go skateboarding. I'm going to go on my driveway right now. I don't have to go anywhere. I'm just going to go dork off and do something stupid. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what skateboarding was supposed yeah. to be. That's how we started skateboarding. Yeah. Yeah. We drive skateboard because it was fun. Yeah. And I, I think part of it is the adventure too, because like we've, you know, like when you get older, I think skaters get complacent and they're like, okay, every every Sunday I'm gonna, you know, put on my pads and go skate, the, you know, the same bowl at the same skate park or whatever. Yeah. Or, or the slam, uh, yeah. same slappy curve. Or yeah, they're gonna go to their same, yeah. slappy, Sunday. same slappy spot every yeah. every Sunday or whatever. And then they're gonna, you know, take off their, you know, skate stuff and they're going to go to work Monday through Friday. But I think, like, us just, like, going on adventures, you know, I mean, it's just like we went, you know, yeah, we went to Montana, we went to Colorado, but even just every weekend we were like, where can we go to find different spots, you know, street spots or whatever. And so, so yeah, it's mostly street skating. And, you know, I went through a long time where I was just skating my bowl in the backyard and I wasn't street skating a lot. But, yeah. But I've like street skated more in the last like two or three years than I ever did, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. So yeah, it's just been a fun adventure. I, I was, you know, I was I was petrified when we first started because we were got used to just doing skating for fun and doing Instagram clips. Yeah. But when I was first thinking like, okay, should I try to actually make a video? That's when you have to use real cameras, and and it becomes something else. Yeah. Like you're going out there, and it's not just like a quick like we're having fun Instagram. Yeah, your it's mind's, like. Your mind's like this, like Oh I man, I gotta I gotta do this. So I decided like I was like, I I had to start with a couple things that were um, scary to me, like the the actual like thing that I was trying that I was actually petrified of, and then I I was just gonna see if I could do it, and then I made the first one, and I was like, okay, that's a start, and then I made the second one was more important than the first one. I was like, okay, I think it's just about this stacking footage, saving it, don't posting it, where you're, you can slowly build something. If you can get the first couple under your belt, you yeah. can keep going. Yeah. And, then, um, and then next thing you know, years of, you know what, it got down to like crunch time for this video, <laughs> for the premiere, like in the old days, where you're racing with the, like trying to get it done, and, you, yeah. and the, the premiere started, they're all, everyone's in the theater. It was basically that. I went down to Dave's house because I was like, holy shit, this video isn't going to get done. Like the, the amount of post you got to do. And, uh, and it, was, it was insane. I, I yeah. lived there for like the entire week before the video. We were yeah. up early, up late, nonstop, like losing our gourd trying to edit and color correct and, you know, sound design and all the things you got to do to make a yeah. video, like the titles, the graphics, everything. Memories, huh? Oh, yeah. it was <laughs> like back in the day because this isn't a, you know, a, a you know, a short yeah. video. This is like a feature almost. It's 50, I think 55 minutes or something like that, right? Yeah, like 54, 54 minutes. 54 yeah. minutes. That's a lot. So I mean, that's a big um, undertaking. So when you watch it, you got to give these guys a lot of credit. <laughs> they really did. I mean, Dave bugged me for two years. Can we send Chris Greggs now to film? you like, oh, maybe we'll get around I never did anything I literally sent him like six clips the week before and then he put it in there because and, and his Dave's comment to me this is the seriousness with them they're getting all filmed perfect and they're like do you ever think it's not a dad clip I go what does that mean <laughs> dad cam like you know he stands on the outside of the pool and films his son you know it's like I'm sorry I go to the skate park and skate or backyard ball where I just hand someone a phone and go get, catch it just so I have something on video I hand someone my phone that's every clip I have you know I don't have a filmer and these guys are out there with filmers filming everything I go and then when I watch this video I go damn I should have got the filmer and went out and done a couple things yeah. So, you know, I have like five tricks in the video, yeah. just literally of the last couple of years. Here you go. Here's a couple of random stuff off my yeah. dad cam, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and so you I, showed up to a few of the shoots, too. Oh, yeah, You're no, a part no, of it. You were in there. I'm stoked to be, I stoked, yeah. I stoked I got in the schoolyard thing. That was yeah. really fun. We yeah. didn't get to, we got to do -si do you know, so that was, that was awesome. But no, you guys put a lot of work into it. They really did. And when you look at it, I want people to think about that when they look at it. Like, 
this shit was hundreds and hundreds of hours of editing and, and, and you know, I mean, for a bunch of dudes at 50 plus on average <laughs> to have fun in a skateboard video. So that's, uh, and, and to have fun, the yeah. number one, to have fun, not to like go, we got the gnarliest trick ever yeah. done. No, we got the most fun tricks in one video ever done. Oh, hold on, you did do the uh, back lip, front lip on the ten yard, ten, uh, ten stair handrail. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I did twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that with the footage was damaged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was cool getting Rick Howard back in yeah, there, yeah. hanging out with Jeremy Ray back in there, like yeah, just like Omar in there, Omar Hassan in there, and and seeing Lambert have to basically rebuild himself up from broken ankle to broken yeah. ankle to broken knee and re redoing, getting new knees and new shoulders and all for years so he could actually skate again. Mm -hmm. um, and he had to relearn how to skate because he can't skate like he used to. You remember how Chris Lambert yeah. used to skate? It was a lot of gnarly stuff. gnarly stuff. But now it's like, you know, he's so, he, he, his body, his ankle got sealed together mm -hmm. because they, that's how they had to fix it. So he doesn't have the movement. So he can't do things he used to, but he had to relearn how to skate in a new creative way. And what, and you'll see his part, and you'll you'll see the like. Well, you now he's the king of daffies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took it back to '77. Yeah, you, yeah, you can so. still figure stuff out yeah. and have fun and and do yeah. and be creative and do stuff. So, uh, yeah, reinvention is like you know because I know some people older skaters get stuck in like, well, I used to be able to do you know these tech tricks, whatever, and I can't anymore. So it's like, why bother? And, yeah. You know, and, or or I'll just go do a frontside slappy. But it's like, it's about like reinventing yourself and like dealing with your body in decay, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, stop talking about me. <laughs> You're only 60, youngster. And I don't know, if you just think about, like, how am I going to have fun today as instead of, like, how rad am I going to get today? you got to think of the fun first, and then if, if you do end up doing something rad or something gnarly, it's, like, secondary, you know, yeah. to the fun, you know? Yeah, how do you get to skate so. tomorrow? Yeah. Like, how yeah. can you still skate tomorrow? Yeah. If you go past that's, that and you fuck yourself up and you can't yeah. skate tomorrow, you already screwed up. Yeah, we have a, definitely a, a lot more self-preservation, you know, when you get older. Because yeah. when you're younger, you're just like, bust, you know, <laughs> do, or, do or die kind do of or thing, die. land or slam. Yeah. But when you're, yeah, when you're older, you're like, well, if I slam on this, you know, I show up to work, to, you know, on Monday <laughs> kind of thing. I got a mortgage, I got to pay, you know, feed the kids, you know, like, there's definitely more thoughts on on that you know as you get older but. Well, well guys the video's coming out soon heads up you want to check this heads out up. black hood so thank you for you guys uh -oh. something for you uh -oh. for everything you have done for skateboarding dave <laughs> from us to tsn media and, and all the skateboard world thank you dave for everything <laughs> you have done for us man. wow pink, pink sparkles pink so appropriate <laughs> uh, <laughs> you wow so that champagne yeah. rose wow, wow. <laughs> Fancy Damn, we're stuff. living the high the life. Laser etched pink sparkles. Yeah, oh, wow. Damn. Blockhead thank stepping up into the high life. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for everything you've done for yeah. skateboarding, yeah. man. Thank you so much, man. And one last question. Um, what can you say to the skaters, and both of you guys can jump in it too, to the upcoming skaters, to people that want to start companies, what do you want to say to them? I got you on that one. <laughs> Have fun. Um, I'm going to tell, I, I would say the same thing that people told me. It's like, don't start a skateboard company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really good advice. <laughs> really good advice. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the most challenging thing yeah. you ever done, did, and it's a terrible time in skateboarding. Just don't do it. <laughs> I'm using reverse psychology. You didn't notice. Because that's what people told me, and, and, and I was just like, no. This is what I want to do, you know, this is, if, yeah, this is what I want to do and I'm going to make it work, you know, so I guess that's my advice, is, okay. is let people tell you not to do it and then do whatever the hell you're going to do anyhow. Yeah. And I just keep skating and uh, enjoy yourself, uh, the joy of skateboarding, really enjoy it, hang out with your friends, go out on adventures like we talked about, get out there um, and, you know, adapt to whatever the situation is and always try to have fun. Yeah, and don't let anybody tell you what to skate.
if you want to write a six inch wide board or a 20 inch wide board or eight wheels or 10 wheels or 50 inches long or a popsicle, just ride what the hell you want and do not ever listen to anybody else. Because exactly. skateboarding is rolling on four wheels and it's whatever the hell you want to. You just said it was eight wheels. <laughs> well, it could be eight wheels. I have all, I have everything, as do you. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Well, it's a wrap for TSM Live Show, Season 7, Episode 8. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. I want to say thank you to Skull Candy for allowing us to film this episode. Thank you for all our sponsors for making this season happen. Thank you for our guests for coming on True Skateboard Mac Live Show. Tune in next year for 2025, Season 8, because it's going to be epic. So I'm going to leave you guys with Zinzac. Thank you, guys. Keep me safe in your arms, I'm